In this lesson, we will be covering how to retrieve model dimensions and also how to place in general dimensions and how to change a dimension from a model while inside of a drawing. The file that I have open is views.idw and it too can be found in your chapter 5 exercise folder. I'm going to zoom up on our base view here and what I want to do is I'm going to move my cursor right in the middle of that view, right click and slide on down and I'm going to click on the retrieve dimensions tool and in the dialog box we have a couple different options so since I right clicked in the view I no longer have to select on that the retrieve dimensions tool can also be selected from the drawing annotation panel now let's take a look at the rest of the dialog box here on the select source I can go back here with the selected feature as you see as I move it around it'll highlight just the specific feature if I wanted to bring that back. If I was working inside of an assembly I could go back and select specific parts. If I want all of the dimensions for this view I'm going to click on select dimensions. They will all appear. I'm going to go back and do a window crossing in this case. Select all of my dimensions and click apply. And then let's click cancel to finish that dialog box. While that dialog box was open, I could have selected inside of another view and retrieved those dimensions as well. Now, let's take a look at cleaning up some of these dimensions here. So you notice I have a lot of these dimensions that are placed right over each other. What I'm going to do is move them around a little bit. So as I select the given dimension, you'll see I have the four arrows, the universal move tool, or the symbol if you will. So as I'm moving it, you'll notice the center line, and as soon as I have the text right in the middle, the line will go to dots, telling me that it is centered. And you can continue to do this for all of your dimensions. It just takes a little bit of time. So these dimensions are being placed from where they were in the model. So there will be dimensions that are going to be appearing here that may not be required for the shop drawing. So in this case, if I want to delete that 16, I can right click over it and select delete from the menu. Or once the object is selected, I can press the delete on the keyboard. So let's delete the 70 diameter dimension. And when we're deleting them, we're not really deleting them. They're still available. They're just not being visible from the screen. So to bring them back, I'm going to go back and use the exact same tool, Retrieve Dimensions, and we'll follow the same procedure, Select Dimensions. But you notice in this case, the dimension that I already had retrieved, those are grayed out. The ones that are deleted or not visible are selected. So in this case, let's bring back the 70 millimeter diameter. Click OK. And again, I can just move that value up. Now there are times when we're going to want to place in dimensions that were not necessarily required when we created the model because we can utilize sketch constraints but the people that are going to be creating this part they may need to know some more information about this part. So I can go back and add general dimensions here. I'm going to change the drawing views panel to the annotation panel and the very top tool is our general dimension tool and it works just like the dimension tool inside the sketch environment. So we can go back and I can select certain points, certain edges, place the, the values wherever we need to. We do have a couple other options when applying general dimensions inside of a drawing. So in this case I'm going to select on the arc and before I place that dimension I'm going to right click and you notice that we have under the dimension type couple different options here so diameter radius and the angle we show that in the, the sketch lesson but we also now have an arc length so I can go back and designate that and let's repeat that again I'm just gonna hit D on the keyboard again right click dimension type or I could do a chord length so a couple of other options here that are available but otherwise everything is, is exactly the same placing in linear angle dimensions as I was showing the radial or the diameter are all exactly the same here. Now for the, the next portion here I'm going to pan on down to our base view 
and let's take a look at controlling the visibility of these dimensions. If I right click while the cursor is right in the middle of that view, there's an annotation visibility option. And in this case, I can turn off all of the model dimensions. And you'll see that it left the dimension that I just placed. Or if I go back, let's turn that back on. And we'll just reverse that under this case. Let's go back and turn off the drawing dimensions where the model dimensions were reappearing. So those are the ways of controlling the visibility of those dimensions. Now, I'm going to zoom back up on this 90 millimeter dimension here across the flats. What I'd like to do is actually make a change to the model. So there's two different ways of doing that. I could go back and open up the model specifically, or I can right click over a given dimension and select edit model dimension. Now, when Inventor is installed, there is an option that you are prompted with. Do you want to allow this functionality or not? So if this is grayed out, you may have that unchecked when it was installed. So in this case, I'm just going to click edit model dimension. And in the dialog box, let's change that to 110. And you'll notice that all of the views updated. But more importantly, let's open up the file and let's verify that that change actually occurred. So I'm going to make sketch one active and you'll notice it's now at 110. Let's change that back to 90. I'm going to do an update. I'm going to save this part. Let's close that file. If I zoom back up, you'll notice it's now back to 90. That's referred to as bidirectional associativity. As the model changes, the drawing views will change. In this case, if I change the drawing, the model also updated. Portion of the lesson, we're going to apply general dimensions to an isometric view. Again, from the drawing annotation panel, I'm going to go ahead and click on general dimension. And you'll see, as I go back and select on this case on the, on the circle or the hole, I'm going to get the exact dimension of that hole. I can always right mouse click just like we were if we were placing in any other dimension. And we have some different options. In this case, I could change it to a radial dimension if I wanted to. But in this case, let's keep that back at a diameter. And I'll go ahead and place that. So again, it's definitely key to remember here, all the dimensions that you are placing, they are true model dimensions. So in this case, the 7.5. In this case, I'll go ahead and delete that. Selected a wrong point. Again, when I place this dimension, if I want to change that to a diameter, you need to do it before you go back and apply that. So in this case, let's change that back to a diameter. And let's get in close. Maybe in this case, I want to get an overall distance of that slot. I can go ahead and do that. I can also select a couple different points if I wanted to. If I wanted to dimension, let's say, from that point to that point, I can go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that. And let's talk about there are some other options here. So when I placed in that dimension, it didn't necessarily look correct. So when I place in a general dimension, for example, I'm going to select these two points. There are a couple different options. So in this case, it defaulted to the up and down dimension. But I can change that I, by pressing the space bar. I can alter between the different solutions that are available. The other part that I can do is I can right mouse click. And under the, the dimension type, I could change that, in this case, back to horizontal or vertical, get another type or the aligned. So those are our different methods for placing those in there. So in this case, that looks correct. I'm just going to go ahead and place that. I'm going to go back and I'm going to select these two outside edges. So you can, as you can see, I'm getting a dimension that looks OK. But what I'd like to do is place this dimension right up and down in the middle of the part. And I can do that by right mouse clicking. And under the annotation plane, we have a couple different options. I can display it on all possible work planes, only the ones that are visible, or I can place it parallel or plan view, if you will, to the sheet. In this case, let's display all work planes. And I'm going to select the plane right in the middle. As you can see, my dimension is now going to be placed right in the middle of that. 
So one last note that all of these dimensions, they are parametrically tied to the model. So as the model will, will change, so will these dimensions as well.